For this technique, I have a unique design challenge that I want to see if I can apply to my covers. So I needed to design this cover for a science and health guide, and they've given me a variety of pictures to use within the cover. Now, my challenge is to use as many of these pictures as possible, and they're good pictures, but they don't really stand out by themselves. So how can I combine all of these images into a single format? So the one great way of doing this is by creating a grid structure to place all of your pictures into them. Here's a great set of examples that I found online for different yearbooks. In this case, they've got a variety of different pictures and also the text, and it's incorporated into the design and overall layout. The grid comes in how they structured each of the different frames that the pictures are placed in. It could be something that's very, very structured like you see on the right here where every picture is nice and lined up in neat rows and columns. It could be something more ambiguous or amorphic like you see with the photo collage down here or even this one in the center. It can be something that's more modern and changing of the colors like you see in some of the others. When you create a grid, there is no set rules on how the grid should be set up, but there are some different ways we can approach creating a grid of photographs in your design. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a grid in Adobe Photoshop and also in Adobe InDesign, simply because I think those are the two best softwares to approach this particular project. So let's get started, and I'll start off with Adobe Photoshop. The first thing I need to do is to establish some sort of grid. In Photoshop, there's a variety of different ways of doing this. One of the easiest ways of making a grid is by going up to View, down to your Guides, and make a new guide layout. Under the new guide layout, you can see here where you can divide up your grid or your entire page into rows and columns, and so you can increase or decrease this however you want. Another good thing that you can create is margins within Photoshop. I like to set up a margin of at least half an inch on all sides, and then in the inside of there is where you can set up your grid. The downside of using this particular method is sometimes it's difficult to set up a grid exactly where you want it to be. In my case, I only want the grid to be at this bottom portion. I don't necessarily need it up here, and I want to have my grid to be perfectly square. Now, of course, I can use this as the starting point of my grid. Nothing wrong with that, but I want to give you an opportunity to show you another thing. So in my case, I'm going to turn off my rows and columns, but I will keep the margins that I've set up here. We'll say OK to this. To set up my grid where I can place photographs inside of them, I'm going to go over to my tool panel and locate your frame tool. With this frame tool, notice that you've got two different kinds of frames that you can pick and choose from, a square or a circular frame. I'm going to create one frame and hold down the shift key when you click and drag so that it makes a nice squared off frame. When you do this, check out your layers panel as well. Notice that it creates a single layer for that frame. I want to have a 4x4 four four grid for this layout. So to duplicate this, I'm going to choose my Move tool at the top, hold down the Option or Alt key as you click and drag, and this will automatically make a copy. And I'm simply going to drag it until it's spaced out across here. Notice now it also copied that layer. Let's do it two more times. So Option, click and drag, Option, click and drag, and there it is set up with this. Now if you don't have yours evenly spaced, you can always select all of the layers. In this case, I've got all four of the frames selected. Go up to the very top and open up your alignment. And we'll distribute these evenly on a vertical plane. In my case, I'm going to bring mine in just a bit more. And I'm going to make them a bit smaller. At this point, the size of it won't matter, but I do want to make sure they're nice and evenly spaced and I do want mine to be much closer together. So I'm going to bring mine real close, even to the point where they're touching, and then I can select all of them. There we go. And I'm going to scale mine out 
until it fits nicely inside of the margins. So that looks good for there. Now that I've got one row created, simply select all of your frames, hold down the Option key as you drag, and we'll create a set of rows for each of these two. Again, scale down and set for there. Now that I have 16 of these created, I can select all of my layers. I'm going to move it up into place. Whoops, excuse me. Let's go back and reselect all of my layers. That's what we want. And we want to move them so that they fit nicely in our frame. With this grid established inside of here, we can turn on our rulers. I've got mine visible, but if you don't see yours, you can go up to View and make sure Rulers is checked on. You can click on your ruler and drag down and place a guide at each intersection point. So we've got all of these going across. And then I'll click on my ruler on the side here and create another one going vertical along this way. Now see I've missed one up here at the top too. Now I've got my grid guides selected and placed exactly where I want them to be. Now let's focus on placing some of the images inside of this area. Now I have another unique little challenge. I've got 16 areas or 16 frames, but I've only got six photographs that I can work from. Well, I did this intentionally. Even though I've got more area to fill, we're going to change up the size and cropping of some of these images. When I look at these pictures, some of these images look really good vertical, while others may work better either as horizontal or even squared off, depending on their particular layout. So we're going to apply that to the layout that we have here. For instance, let's place one of the images inside of this first little frame that we have. With the frame selected, you can go up to Edit File, down to Place Embedded, and let's choose one of the pictures to work from. In this case, I'll choose a horizontal one. Let's go with, yeah, let's go with this one. I'll say place. We'll give it a second to think about it. And you can see the image is placed now inside of the frame and it exists inside of that squared off area. Right now, this looks pretty good. However, if I wanted to, I could erase away the image that's next to it. And I'm going to let this completely expand over into this area. To do that, select the frame, go into your Layers panel, and make sure to click on the Frame portion. So only this is selected. Notice now that you've got your handles that you can click on the edge and drag over to fill in this area. To edit the contents of the frame, select the Contents area here, and notice now you've got some handles inside of that picture. All I have to do is click on the picture and readjust it to fill out the rest of that frame. And that looks good. We'll even pull it down just a bit more here. Now I can back out. Let's place one below it. Again, I'll select this frame here, go to File, Place Embedded. Let's choose another picture. Let's get one that'll look good, nice, and squared. I like this person. So we'll do Place. Let's say I want her to take up these four quadrants here. So I'll get rid of these frames. I'll select her frame. Make sure only the frame is selected, and we'll expand it into this area. Then I can select the picture in my Layers panel, and I can drag it up and reposition it so that it fills out that area much better. We'll hit return to lock in that layout. So I'm going to repeat this process, giving myself a variety of different pictures to place inside of here. Another thing you can consider is overlapping of some images. Let's say I wanted to put a picture that had some pictures on top of it. I'll choose this one here. Again, we'll place a picture. and Let's do a nice vertical picture for this one. Place embedded. Either that one or let's go for this one. Let's go for this one. I'll place it inside of here. I'm going to 
expand it all the way down to the bottom of my page. That'll be okay there. We'll select the contents. I'll make it much larger too. And then we'll nudge it over into place so that it fits nicely. And maybe I want to have a picture on top of it in some different areas. So this top corner, I've left that frame there so I can go to File and Place and place another picture inside of that area. Let's do another one that can be framed off a little bit better. We'll place him and just the picture selected, I can make him be much larger. Maybe down here, I'll let this be another horizontal image. We'll place something into there. That looks good. We'll reposition it down just a bit more. And then finally fill in the last one with a smaller image. File, place embedded. And then we'll get that last picture and crop him to fill that area. I think it'd be best to focus on either one person or both the people that are in here. So if I had to recrop it, I think he's the main subject and he fits well in that particular area. Now that I've got all these done, it would be okay to get rid of any unnecessary frames by selecting those and simply hitting delete and deleting away their layers. I can also go in and tweak my layout just to make sure everything fits a little bit better. For instance, I think this needs to be a little bit taller so it can be found and seen. And we'll lock that in. I think we can pull this guy down to right there. Whenever you do layouts like this, it's always important to understand that you're creating a balance of the images. If I turn off my preview mode by going up to view and turning off my guides so I can either show extras down to show and then uncheck guides, this will take those away so that I can see what I'm looking at. This gives me an idea of what this would look like as a balanced view. Maybe I'll put them back up here where I originally had them. Another final thing you can do to make your guides, or excuse me, to make your grid look a little bit more cleaner is by adding some lines on top of your guide. You can see when I resized several of these, they didn't quite match up along the edges. Adding a simple little white line on top of everything would be a great way of enhancing the grid and also cleaning up the edges of the border. Here's how we can do that. I'm going to choose my topmost layer in my Layers panel, then go over to the bottom of your Tool panel and locate the Rectangle Tool. With the tool selected, check out the Tool options at the very top. Make sure that Shape is selected for the kind of shape that we're creating, and I'm going to set my Fill Color to be None, and my Stroke Color is going to match the layout and color scheme that I already have, so I'm just going to give it a simple white stroke all the way around. For now, I'll set my Stroke Size to be 2 pixels, and if you open up the Stroke Options, I'm going to align it on the inside edge of my area, though sometimes it's, a, it's okay to do it in the center or even the outside edge. I think the inside would be best for what we're trying to do for the out, outer portion. To draw off my stroke, all I've got to do is align my cursor now to the outer edge of my square. This will draw off the rectangle, and if I need my stroke to be much larger, I can still come back up here and increase the size of it and hit return. And that will give me a much thicker stroke. In this case, it looks like I'm going to need to go about 12 pixels in order for it to be seen on top of here. Again, I can go to View and down to Extras, or excuse me, Show, and I can turn off my guidelines. And I can see now I've got a nice little white stroke. Let's add a white stroke inside of the entire grid as well. I'll turn back on my grid. And this next time, instead of using my rectangle tool, let's use the line tool. We'll do the same kind of setup. Make sure shape is selected. You've got your stroke, the size that you need it to be. And all I've got to do is to create a set of lines that follow the lines that I've drawn for my grid. There's one line set there. And then we'll set it to be 12 points in width. 
Now notice when I did this, I still can't see my line. The reason this is happening is if you go up to your stroke options at the top, set it to be aligned in the center of your line instead of the inside edge. Now that that's done, your line should be appearing and it should be the same width as what you've had for everything else. To quickly make a copy of this, let's turn back on my grid. All I've got to do is to hold down Option when I select and click on my line and it'll quickly and easily make a copy of that line. Of course, you can always just draw another line for there. Let's do the same thing going across. Grab my line tool, simply click and drag, and it remembers the last lines that we used. We'll set it to be 12, and again, aligned on the center portion of that. With that selected, hold down Option when you click and drag using your Move tool, and that should give you a second line placed for there. Let's back out and see our entire design. Great, now I've got a good simple little layout that has all of the images placed inside of a grid. Again, go back and see if you can edit or correct any of the images so that everything is nice and balanced and they work well and maybe you don't have any awkward cropping. The other thing you can do is you can still use this grid as a guideline for your text. Up at the very top, you can see how I've got Science and Health centered well, let's use the grid guidelines to realign the text so that it's nice and flush with one of the guidelines that's given. So in this case, maybe I'll move this over, and I can even make this slightly larger to go all the way out to the margin edge, and we'll set this to be flush to the left as well. With it selected, I'll go over to my Properties panel, set it to be flush left, and I bet I can get away with it being a little bit smaller too. There we go. Now we have a fantastic looking cover for this health and science report or field guide that uses the grid system that we've established inside of here. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to set up the same thing but using Adobe InDesign and all of the frames within that, that area. So if you want to do this in Photoshop, here's how I would approach it. If you want to do this in InDesign, stay tuned for the next video.